remember you wanted to return to school. And while it's not the same one, a special school, that's an insult. That's what I want to say. It's a step down. It's not what you think. All the students there are pretty active in their own sort of way. It's geared towards students that can still get around and learn, but just need a little help in one way or another. Your father's right, and many of the graduates at the school have gone on to do amazing things. A person doesn't need to be held back by their disability. One of my colleagues in another hospital is a graduate. I don't care. I don't care. A person doesn't have to be held back from the, by their disability? That's what a disability is. I really hate that something so important was decided for me. But what can I do about it? A normal life is out of the question now. It's funny. I'd always thought of my life as actually kind of boring. But now I miss it. I want to protest. I want to blame the lack of reaction on shock or fatigue. I could easily yell out something now. Something about how I can go back to school anyway. But, no. I don't say anything. The fact is that I know it's futile. I look around the room, feeling very tired of all this. The hospital, doctors, my condition, everything. I don't see anything that would make me feel any different. There really isn't a choice. I know this, but the thought of going to a disabled school? What are those even like? As much as I try and put a positive spin on this, it's very difficult. But let me try. A clean slate isn't a bad thing. That is all I can think of to get me through this. At least I still have something even if it's a special school. It's something. It's a fresh start. And my life isn't over. It would be a mistake to just resign myself to thinking that. At the very least, I'll try to see what my new life will look like. Hmm. Alright. Act 1. Life Expectancy. That was a freaking hell of a long-winded opener. I hope this is a good game. I have no idea anything about it. I mean, I had to turn off the sexual references... So that way we can actually see sexual references. So I'm kind of kind of curious where this game's going to twist and uh, get interesting. Because I heard it's uh, going to need a lot of editing. <laughs> Anyways, the gate looked far too pompous for what it was. In fact, gates in general seem to do that. But this one, especially so. Red bricks, black wrought iron, and gray plaster assembled into a hole that didn't feel welcoming at all. I wondered if it looked like what a gate for a school should look like, but I couldn't really decide. Probably no. Of course, I didn't want to get stuck on thinking about the gate for too long, so I entered through it with a brisk pace and felt surprisingly good. Moving forward feels good. So I walked towards the main building of Yamaku Academy with this brisk pace. I'm alone as my parents are taking stuff to the dorms, and there's supposed to be someone waiting for me. The grounds are incredibly lush, filled with green. It doesn't feel like the kind of grounds a school would have. More like a park, with a clean walkway going past the trees, and the smell of fresh-cut grass, and all other park-like things. Words like clean and hygienic prop into my mind. It makes me shudder. I shake them off. Stay open-minded now. It's your new life. You have to take it as it comes. That's what I tell myself. A few big buildings loom behind the leafy canopies, too big for too many, and too many for just a school. Everything seems off. It's different from what I thought I knew about schools. It's an uncanny valley. Even though I was told that this is my new school, in the back of my head it doesn't feel like one. I wonder if this feeling is real or caused by my expectations of a school for the disabled. Speaking of that, I don't see anyone else here. It's kind of eerie. It makes me wish there was somebody here so I could anchor myself to something tangible instead of having this feeling that I stepped into another dimension. The trees hum with the wind and the green hues flashing all around me catch my attention. It makes me think about hospitals again, how they say the operating rooms are painted green because green is a calming color. So why am I feeling so anxious despite all this greenery? Only after I stand in front of the the haunty main building, I surprised myself by realizing why the gate bothered me. It was the last chance I had to turn back, even if I had no life I could return to. 
but still, after entering, there was absolutely no way I could go back anymore. Feeling nervous and with this realization set in my head, I opened the front door. A tall man with bad posture notices me as I enter. We're the only people in the lobby, so it's only logical. The hell? Y you must be Ni Na Nikki? Nakai. 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 Nakai, that's it. So you are. Excellent. I'm your homeroom and science teacher. My name is Mutuo. Welcome. We exchange a handshake that is neither firm nor sloppy, and he looks at his watch. The head nurse asked you for a brief check-in visit, but there's no time for that now. Oh, should I go later? Yes, afternoon's probably fine. We should get going and introduce you to the rest of the class. They're waiting already. Waiting for me? I don't really like being the center of attention, but I guess it's inevitable in a situation like this. Somehow, not knowing what is waiting for me makes me feel really nervous. Thinking of this, I almost miss what the teacher is saying. Do you want to introduce yourself to the class? Why or of course? Uh, I guess of course. Yeah, I mean, isn't that normal? Of course, but not everyone likes to be the center of attention. I'm probably one of those people, but I guess I should be the one to give the first impression of myself. Right, but it's no problem. Well, let's go then. My heart is pounding in my chest, and it keeps me thinking about my condition as I follow the teacher up the stairs. Yeah, seriously, if he's that nervous, he might be fucking have to calm down a little bit or he's going to have another heart attack. The third door down, the third floor corridor, is marked with his classroom for class 3-3. Matuo opens the door and enters. Oh, look at that picture! What the hell is that? It's like a rat man! Ugh! Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry I'm late again. I hesitate for a split second at the door, freezing on the spot. Ah, get a grip. This is a big step, I know that. But there isn't any point to worrying so much about it. At least not this soon. Ooh. I follow the teacher into the classroom and look around, partially so I won't have to meet the curious gaze of my new classmates. It's pretty spacious. The ceiling is unusually high, and there's lots of space left over around and in between the desks. An entire wall taken up by blackboards and the high old-fashioned windows only make it seem larger. The students' desks are standard wooden desks with a shelf underneath for books and wooden chairs with metal frames. Simple and efficient. I stop walking in front of the classroom and face the other students. They all look normal like students in any other school, but then why would they be here? They're probably like me and have something wrong with them, only it's just not immediately obvious. Then I notice one of the girls seems to be missing the thumb on her right hand. It's a little jarring. I'm looking at all the people in the classroom, trying to see what I can see that's different. Uh, <laughs> the one guy in the back looks way off. Despite the natural tendency to listen when someone's talking about you, I tune out the teacher's speech halfway through while he introduces me to the class. Oh yeah, you can see the one girl's got uh, prosthetic legs. I see a hurt knee. Oh yeah, so they all got something wrong. I notice a flash of dark hair and see someone looking at me. A girl with really long, straight hair that is pretty eye-catching. As she sees me looking at her, she covers her face with her hands as if it will make her invisible. There's one boy with a cane leaning against the lockers at the rear of the class. It's weird seeing someone so young with a cane. Another girl seems to be making some weird hand motions. Sign language? She peers at me over the rims of her glasses, then goes back to whatever she's doing. She's kind of cute. So is the cheery looking girl with the pink hair sitting next to her. She's really hard to miss. I don't know how I didn't notice her the moment I walked in. Please welcome the newest classmate. He clasps his hands, and so does everyone else, except for the girl in the first row, who has only one hand. I cringe a little, but I hide it by bowing in thanks for the applause I did not deserve. A collective silence tells me that I should open up my mouth now. So, hi, I'm Hisayonaki. 
And after that, my hobbies are reading and soccer. I hope to get along well with everyone, even though I'm a new student. And after that, I'm being so boring. This is exactly like every self-introduction ever. I should say something more, something more exciting. I end up saying nothing, and the teacher picks up from there. Everyone seems to be satisfied, even with what little I said, though. A few girls are whispering to each other, throwing glances at me. It could have gone worse. Hmm. I listen to the teacher as he drones on about getting along while letting my gaze sweep across the classroom. Everyone seems to be listening to him intently, and when he's done, they clap their hands again, which feels like a weird thing to do. The first row girl claps on this round, with her one hand against her other wrist that ends in a bandaged stump. It makes me feel a little bad. We're going to be doing some group work today, so that'll give you a chance to talk with everyone. Is that okay with you? Yeah, it's, it's fine with me. That's good. You can work with Hakamichi. She's the class representative. She can explain everything you might want to know. And who else would be able to do that better, right? How could I know? The teacher passes out the day's assignments and announces that we will be working in groups of three. It hits me that I don't know who Hakamichi is. Slow. The teacher seems to catch my helpless expression. Oh, right. Hakamichi is right there. Suzuni Hakamichi? He calls out her name. The cute, bubbly-looking girl with the bright pink hair and gold eyes waves her hand at me. I take a seat next to her by the windows. Whoa, pink hair and gold eyes. That's interesting. Hi, I guess you're Hakamichi, right? It's nice to meet you. <laughs> what? I'm caught off guard by her laughter. It's nice to meet you too, but... I'm not Hakamichi. I'm Misha. This is Hakamichi Si Chian. Si Chan. Giggling, Misha points to the girl next to her, the one I saw using sign language before. It looks like she's been staring at me this whole time. She nods once nonchalantly to show that she acknowledges my presence, but only barely. She has short yet carefully, neatly brushed hair. A pair of oval-shaped glasses balances on the tip of a dainty nose, and dark blue eyes that seem to alternate every few seconds between analytical and slightly bored. It's nice to meet you. Hmm. She immediately looks at Misha, who smiles and makes a few quick gestures with her hands. Hakamichi nods and makes a few gestures of her own. I start to wonder if the teacher was messing with me, saying things like, you'll be able to talk to people, and who better to explain things to you. I can see you're a little confused, right? But I understand. Why would, why, why you would think I was she, Shi-chan? Shi-chan is deaf, so I'm the person who translates things back and forth for her. I'm like an interpreter. She says it's nice to meet you, too. Aww. You're the new student, aren't you? Well, Shi Chen, of course he is. If he wasn't, he would have been—he would have been standing up for no reason, right? Right? He seems like a l very interesting person, doesn't he? We knew there was going to be a new student, but we didn't know he'd be here today so soon. He Chen, right? Hick Chen, His Chen, Hick Hick Chen, Hick Chen. I'm just gonna call her Hick Chen. Yup, it fits, doesn't it? Did I say that out loud? It's just a surprise. I never liked that nickname. I don't really see how. It fits. You look just like I imagined. Hmm. Ha 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 Yeah, you look just like a Hick-chan. <laughs> I wonder why everyone seems to think so. Hmm. Hakamichi taps her fingers on the desk to get Misha's attention, then gestures back and forth to each other, excitedly, their hands a blur. Misha seems a little overwhelmed. Ah, uh, sorry about that. Shik Chen wants you to know that she's the class rep, so if there's anything you need to know, you can feel free to ask her. Do you like the school so far? We can show you around a little if you haven't had time to walk around and familiarize yourself with it. The punctuation's bad. 
<laughs> Look, it's familiarized. Question mark yourself with it. 